you talked a little bit about the healthcare case earlier, mm -hmm. but I wonder how you feel, you know, there have been sort of two lines on this from the left. Right. One is that this is a very easy case. Mm -hmm. It's really a slam dunk. All the doctrine is lining up in mm -hmm. one way, not to mention the prudential, pragmatic, mm -hmm. Posner, Thomas Jefferson argument for having a national market for health care and an individual mandate. And yet, we have this challenge with this enormous amount of time being spent on argument next week, mm -hmm. and some fear that this case could be politicized in a way that would create the kind of damning 5-4 split um, that I think pretty much no one would really be that happy about. And I wonder you know, whether you think that the outcome of that case um, will say a lot about the resilience of the Constitution. It's unusual to have a signature piece of legislation from the standing president before the court in an election year. The Obama administration kind of further amped up the drama by removing the argument. Someone will argue this, but the government is no longer arguing that it's possible for the court to just punt on this case under a 19th century law called the Anti-Injunction Act. So we have very high stakes, and I wonder whether you feel like the outcome of this case could either be very affirming for the resilience of the Constitution or could really do damage, or whether we, in the end, will see this as only one moment in this longer tapestry. I, I think probably the latter in the following sense, right? because the, this, the case really is, is quite important. Um, but, uh, I, and I, I would think that a decision to strike down the, any part of the Affordable Care Act would be doctrinally and uh, constitutionally and politically a, a disaster, a terrible move. Um, uh, in fact, the question, I think, is going to be whether this court is willing to look at questions like Alito, the way Alito did in U.S. versus Jones, looking forward, as Judge Kavanaugh said in his separate opinion, looking forward, this tool of using a market-based solution to an to a, a economic problem is something that can be used in ways that we, you know, it's not a liberal idea or a conservative idea. It's something, it's a tool that government can have at its disposal. Do we want to cut that off now without any knowledge of what the consequences of that would be because we don't think that, that um, you know, Millard Fillmore would have, would have uh, proposed this bill? Um, or do we want to try to go for an immediate halt in change? And historically, the court has fallen prey to this immediate halt uh, idea far too often. And the, the test for the Constitution is not whether the court does it, but what the response is. From the country? From the country, right. Because uh, the Constitution is resilient enough to work around these things. Sometimes it, once it took a civil war, that is bad. Uh, I don't think that will happen over the You're Affordable not Care Act. That. Right, yeah. Sometimes it takes a constitutional amendment. Sometimes it takes uh, the New Deal crisis. Um, but, but usually we go on. That doesn't mean there aren't high stakes in terms of the immediate consequences. But I don't think it in, in and of itself is going to tell us what the health of our Constitution is. It'll tell us a lot about the Supreme Court. But historically, the Supreme Court has not really ever been a particularly faithful steward of the Constitution. That has to be done by all of us.